So finally we come to this last subject in this topic which is the unit operations and we are left with the reactor engineering section or reaction engineering or reactor theory or whatever you want to call it many times also kinetics and reactions there are plenty of names I did check it and there are plenty of ways to say this class but in general what I wanted to show you is that we talk about reactors which differs us from other uh, let's say chemistry lessons or chemistry theory or chemists versus chemical engineering talks about how to get the models and other kinetic models ideal versus non idealities of reactors we take a lot of space time with the reactors typically the CSTR which is continuous tier tank reactor PFR which is plug flow reactor and pack bed reactor and of course the almighty batch now what else we talk about well I think those are the most common ones and of course we talk about mechanism I don't like to about these but mechanisms because this is more into chemistry so I will say that you will probably see that more into a, in a chemistry class or a kinetic chemistry lesson I saw it in the reactor engineering part because I don't have that much of chemistry background but typically you will see these way much more rate loss which is the models and so on now let's check out what do we study that in reaction engineering or reactor engineering whatever you want to call it first we start with shall we operate batch or in section or shall we do it continuously so this is a reactor probably you are wondering how can you do a reactor that is continuous well it's kind of abstract if you haven't seen that much into uh, process engineering but we have it right here so let's say we have here a plus B put it here and we mix it and they need to do all these all the way until here and they go out but let's say that they need all these because we need time for reaction we need time for heating and we need time for mixing so we have also well time and time to cover all that distance so as you can see we have momentum transport we have heat transport we have mass transport and we had reactions which is very typical for the reactor engineering unit operations so once it reacted you will see that this is start moving and with respect of time you will see that no nothing changes because here you will see the same concentration of a with B you will always end up with the same concentration of C you should always take the same time since we are using the same velocity so this is a continuous process for a batch process well I think it's the most obvious case when you get A and B close it let's say we close it we mix it we let it react and finally after one hour or two hours we take out the product C so the difference is that concentration is changing with respect of time we are very important occurring a lot of attention into the time required for that reaction to occur so those are the two types of processes in reaction engineering that you will see the most now you will see a lot of isothermal reactor design I mean reactor design and we start with isothermal because it's easier to model due to the heat transfers and the changes on uh, kinetic models and so on but we actually want to eventually study non-isothermal design as you can see you have this one right here and this one right here we start with isothermal design which is the easy one we start analyzing the types of reactors which is continuous steer tank reactor I'm not going to explain it that much it's just a reactor you get A plus B they start reacting and you take C this is continuous as the name implies PFR is this one right here I just show you and PBR is pretty similar to this one but let's say that in all these tubes we have a catalyst or a, 
as the name implies, a packed bed reactor. So let's say that A plus B will never react until they come with a catalyst. So they will start reacting over here and these tubes right here and so on. Now that was for the reactor design. We will see a lot of kinetics, how to model those reactions, kinetics and plenty of other models, Arrhenius laws and how to relate temperatures, etc. And finally, once you get a lot of that, you will see non-isothermal design, which is adiabatic and with change of temperature. Uh, more importantly, you start analyzing non-ideal behavior of the reactors. Many times you will see that the reactor will not uh, behave the way you expect it because it has a non-ideal. It's a very silly but important example is, let's say we have very viscous material and we are not mixing this part right here. So even though we have very a lot of mix here, we still don't have movement here and this will not react because it's on the top, sorry, on the bottom of the reactor. Why do we need it? Well, of course, as the name implies, we need to react material. And why do we want to react material? Because we want to produce new materials. And I will say this is the highest uh, value accommodation in chemical engineering. You want maybe to model some reactions. You are experimenting with new materials and new reaction. Let's say um, sigma reacts with omega and forms, I don't know, maybe pi. These are new materials, you just want to understand what happens if you increase these, what happens if you decrease these, what happens if you decrease the time, temperature, and so on. And eventually, once you did this study, you want to get the kinetic model, which you might later use in the reactor design, which is this. You want to be able to build reactors. You're going to see why do we need this hatch. This is a human hatch, so literally a human goes inside and can clean all the reactor these little legs so we avoid, I don't know, uh, any contact with the uh, surface or the floor here. We have inlets, 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 and maybe you have an outlet on the backward that we cannot see. We will see a lot of materials, how to build it, and the important part right here guys is that since reactors are very versatile, you can change the shape, the type, and so on. So many times you see and think it's a distillation column, so like this in, the, in this example, but it is not, it's just a reactor with a different shape. You want to also optimize, as we always want to do, time of reactions, size of reactor, and number of cycles. You want to make it the least time, the least size, and the least number of, rea of reaction cycles. Another very important part is that you want to increase selectivity, so if a plus B can turn to C, but A plus C can turn to D, and you're interested in producing C, well, how can you avoid this happening? Well, you will see that you need to use very low amounts of A and very high amounts of B. And eventually, the more you study, you will see that you can, that heating and cooling is very important, not only for the essential heating of materials, but because of the reaction. Kinetic reactions typically depend directly with respect of temperature. So we want to understand how much can we heat or increase the temperature so it goes fast, but it will not favor other reactions and it will not show, let's say, a, an effect or a very bad like byproduct. And essentially is what I wanted to show you about reactors. It's a very interesting topic. I love it. Plenty of people hate it because there's plenty of chemistry. And yeah, I know we are process engineers, but chemical engineer implies chemistry knowledge. <laughs>